Hey guys, Comic here. So for the two years of development, we discussed concepts, gameplay, animations, gameplay again, scenery. I think the perfect way to end off this devlog series is to talk about the game's world. In this video, I will be showing you the design process and methods I took to make the game's central hub world Sky City Plaza. The name of the game is literally the city you have to protect. Of course I couldn't mess this up. I had to go big or go home with this one. My goals were to make something that looked lively. A city that didn't look dead or husk. Or like, you know, just look empty. So, I wanted to make a city that actually looked like a city you would want to protect. So I took a look around the internet. Saw a few pieces of media and videos to get some inspiration. Some real world places I took inspiration from was Shinjuku City, Shinjuku, right? Shinjuku City in Japan, Times Square in New York, and Las Vegas. I also tried to get inspiration from Cyberpunk media, but I realized my game wasn't going for that dark theme and edgy tone that Cyberpunk has, so I mainly took inspiration from the technology that is used in the Cyberpunk themes. The theme of Sky City Retro is high tech, high life, a world where utopia can be a reality, but not quite there yet. Or, um, cyber prep. Cyber prep? As this, uh, wiki suggests. It's a pretty cool wiki, by the way. With that out of the way, I got to work on a main hub of Sky City. Bruh. I tried several attempts at making the city, and it just kept looking like boo boo. Gonna be honest. I'm not much of a background artist, but this did definitely help me get better. After several attempts, I finally got what I wanted, so I made some buildings and tried it out in the game. I ended up not liking it. Something was off, either the colors were too dark, the level was just too straight, or those towers were just ginormous compared to like the ground level you're you're walking on so this time i scrapped all that work it took like a week of work i scrapped it all restarted and this time i made sure i paid attention made sure i used a lot of colors and i got something that I actually like now it's time to add in the shops the citizens and some code and bam here's the final version I have made hub worlds in the past, but this by far, in my opinion, is the most lively hub world I made to date. There are some people talking, walking, just sitting, and I also added some ambient sounds as well as different weather. So every time you start the game, there's going to be a, a different weather it's going to choose, but not every time. It's going to do uh, like random. <laughs> All the NPCs you see walking by or just sitting, they are randomly generated. So like sometimes you will see NPCs that look the same. And sometimes you'll even see NPCs that don't look too good or their colors are just completely randomized. Yeah, I'll fix that in the future. As I said previously, the world is close to a utopia, which means you will see blimps in cultures and languages with a mix of higher level technology. So, as they're walking, you could see some drones flying boxes around, or you could see like automated carts carrying boxes. I want everything to have a reason for being there. And with that said, let's go inside these shops and take a look around. This is the clothing shop in Sky City. Here you can buy clothes and equip them. 
Some clues even have add-ons to help you out in levels, and the owner of this shop is named Sally. She is the youngest person to own a shop and brand, being just 17 years old. On her free time, she is drawing or working on clothing designs for her clothing brand, Twinsies, which is in the game, by the way. Since her brand just started, she only has one signature outfit, which is the full yellow one. You will be able to get this at the beginning of the game. Next, we have Specs or Spectre, but I just call him Specs. He was an ex Defender that now owns a weapon shop. Here you can buy weapons and equip them into your inventory. So you always have something new to fight off your opponents. You can also test the weapon out before you buy. In this shop, we have Mincy. She's a shy one. She sells you skill perks. These skill perks will give you new abilities in battle, so you can switch out your dash ability with something else. As usual, the stronger and better skills will cost more to unlock. And yes, that is a TV she is wearing that is not her actual head. Lastly, we have Herb. She is a spiritualist that runs a healing shop. The music is meditation music, so after your hectic battles, you can come here and just take a breather. You can buy pills and medicine from her that heals you mid-battle or increases your chances of landing a critical. Very useful when you start getting near the end of the game. We talked about shots, but that's not all you could do. You can also find special NPC characters from uh, different games and take on special missions with them. And you can also buy from the vending machines. They usually cost less than the shop product, so probably completing like one level will give you enough money to buy from a vending machine. The products here boost your stats up for only one level, so after you beat that level, you will have to go back to the vending machine and buy it again. The vending machine will only have drinks, but the vendor, she will sell you food. What is different is that the drinks boost up your basic moves like running and jumping, and the food will boost your stats for attacks and shielding, so choose wisely. Finally, we are going to get into the last part of this entire hub world, which is the Defenders HQ, or the Defenders Headquarters. This is the main hub you will go to select your next story mode mission. And here, you will see other Defenders just chilling, or you will also see the Commanders. Their names are Commander Count and Commander Kale. In later builds, you will be able to talk to them, and they will tell you what you need to do. In the HQ, you can access the training room or access the city map. It shows the entire city of Scott and its districts. The blue dots you see scattered around will be different locations you will be able to go to. It is basically like the level select. Another tidbit I forgot to mention earlier is you have your own personal menu in the cell world so you can change the controls, graphic settings, and more. Anywhere you go, even though hub is relatively small, I also added a quick travel menu just in case. You will be using this menu a lot, so don't forget. That wraps it up for this video, Final Dev World. You guys may be wondering, what is the future in terms of videos? Well, since I have covered pretty much everything big about this game, there's not much I can talk about that is worthy of like Dev World type videos. In the future, you will see more fleshed out professional looking trailers and tiny snippets of new things I've added up until launch. So yeah, that's all I gotta say. New demos out, link in the description. If you guys find any bugs, report them in the Discord server as well. With that said, thanks for watching till the end. See you guys and enjoy the rest of your day.